It's come on, boys, let's go in the hustle before the spectacular 100-mile beach and road race for souped-up cars at Daytona Beach, Florida. This is the annual competition for modified and sportsman stock cars, one of the big events on the NASCAR racing schedule. Everyone's in a hurry to get these made-over automobiles into line for the time trials before the big race tomorrow. Busiest man on the track is Bill Tuthill, National Secretary of NASCAR, the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing. Down there on that broad and beautiful beach are about 100 cars, which anxious owners, drivers, and crews are tuning up in the hope that they can qualify at high speeds and thus get the front positions at the start of the race. The so-called modified stock cars have the souped-up motors and special equipment. The sportsman's cars are older models with some modifications. All cars are equipped with wire mesh to protect the motor from flying dirt and sand. The races have a beauteous side to them. Mostly, they're spectators, wives and sweethearts of the drivers, but not always, as we shall see. So you're Faye Taylor, the famous gal from Dublin, right? Yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this uh, lady that you're seeing here is a beauty from Dublin, Ireland. And I'm sure that you're going to enjoy watching her race later on. Tell me something about your racing experience, will you? Well, I started by winning a scholarship for housecraft. Oh, yes. And I turned the award into my first racer to uh -huh. escape from a life of housekeeping. That was really the beginning. I see. And, and then I raced in Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, India. Oh, all around the world. And I didn't come... Taylor, you came to this country, right? Yes, and I didn't come before because they said that women couldn't race here. I came just over two years ago to sell foreign automobiles, and then I started racing, and last June I began a tour down the west coast and right across to New York, which I reached just before the end of the season. And I'm east for the first time, and this is my first visit to Florida. I see. Do you like it in Florida? Love it, what oh, I've seen of it so far. I was hoping to take a um, racing car down the stretch. Unfortunately, I came back unexpectedly from a trip from England uh -huh. uh, without the time to arrange for this car to be here. So now uh, I'm going to drive this one today. Uh, Mr. Schneider usually drives it. Frankie Schneider, huh? Yes. Well, that was nice of him to give up the car. I'd like to know why you got started to race it. Uh, because... I wanted to escape from a life of housekeeping. Oh, I see. In other words, you don't care much for that kind of thing. I won my first race. I began on a motorbike. I How did have you done in this country? Very well. I've been racing midgets on the midget speedways and also stock on the small quarter mile over, which are quite a difficult, the most difficult sort of racing, I think, in the world. Well, you certainly are being, uh, making a record for yourself in this country, and I hope you do well here in the race tomorrow. There's an interesting spectator, a monkey. It belongs to that veteran driver, Dick Egan. The time trials are on. Down the beach for two miles to pick up speed, then a time mile for the records. Gals on the sidelines get pretty nervous at times. She's really dressed for the event, too. These cars do better than 110 miles an hour, and they're really burning up the sand. Our Irish lady kisses Frankie Schneider, a nice resounding one too, and gives him the V for victory sign. Here comes the famous Monty Block. He sets a record of 115.42 miles an hour over the measured mile. Time trials are over, so up come the markers of the course. Well, it's race morning now, and the pit area is crowded and busy. Crews are intent on their jobs, and all crews aren't what you'd expect either. Look down there. Is this a husband and wife team here? Yes, sir. Uh, what is the name, please? Tim Burke. Uh, could you stand up and look at our camera here, Tim? Sure. And uh, tell me the name of your bride. Madeline. Madeline? How long have you been married, Madeline? About two years. About two years. And has your husband uh, had you out on this kind of a deal before? No. I see. What are you... Are you the pit crew? Uh-huh. I'm helping them. Well, that's wonderful. What do you think of her as a pit crew, uh, Tim? Fair to the middle. Fair to the middle. I see. Well, does she ever do anything wrong? <laughs> yeah. She just... Didn't you see it just dropped the car in a stand on Oh, me? she did. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd like to know something about uh, 
Your age isn't so. How old are you, Madeline? Nineteen. And you? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. And you've been married a little less than two years. Did you know you were going to get anything like this when you mm. got married? No, I certainly didn't. Well, how do you like it? Oh, I like it very much. You do? Mm-hmm. Have you seen your husband racing before? Mm-hmm. How's he done? Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good? How have you done, Tim? Do you want any first places? Fifth and middle and no first places yet. Fourth and fifth and places like that. Well, around that. It's almost race time now. Hoods go down and crews strap doors shut so they can't fly open and expose the driver to greater danger when there's danger enough at best. They're lined up there for the start down on Daytona Beach. And they're off. The sportsman's division goes first. And then the somewhat faster modified cars. 97 of them all together. 97 of them headed up the beach for two miles. And then they'll return on the parallel road to complete a course of four and one-tenth miles. 24 laps will make a 100 miles. Here they come, into the turn that takes them to the, to the road, and Jimmy Llewellyn in 47 is leading the pack. A car stalled on the turn. That's got them all jammed up. That's the north turn with the beach on the right. They're speeding down the road in the last half of the first lap, and there's passing going on at great rate at around 110 miles an hour. Cars conked out on the road, blocking the speeding traffic. Here they come, battling for the lead. Jimmy Lewall in the 47 ahead. Tim Flock in 91. And Jack Smith in 2B goes ahead in the turn. Dust almost blots out the view. There's a car spun around backwards and in that crowd, too. Back in the race now. It's a terrific fight for the lead at no quarter battle between Llewellyn and 47 and Jack Smith and 2B with Llewellyn still ahead. Llewellyn takes a north turn, half in a skid. One car stalled in the sand, but the crowd roars on. The passing continues as they speed down the road. The Wallen leads the mob into the south turn with Jack Smith in 2B and Roy Hall in 222, not far behind. This turn is dangerous, and there's one that didn't make it. It's Charles Tidwell at number 36. Boy, what a place to back onto the track, but what else can he do? He's over the edge. That's, let me see, that's Chuck Arnold in number 94. I hope he's not hurt. He's not coming out. There he is, coming through the window. He looks okay. He's unhurt. Holy smoke, another one, and almost two more. What a spot to be in. That's Tom Fenley hanging on the brink there. Up the beach, past the fence, that's Wally Campbell, number one. He's last year's Grand National Champion. Number 69 with Walt Hartman in the wheel comes in to report motor trouble. He's kind of hot, too. What a place to race. It's here, you know, that Sir Malcolm Campbell drove his famous Bluebird 272 miles an hour along the beach. Bill Whitenhouse in number 23 has to pit. The field is thinning out some already. He's worked up a head of steam. What do you suppose he sees? Well, even in this race, a loose fender is unusual. That's Jimmy Thompson in number seven coming into the pits while the race whizzes past him. 
you're going to do a quick repair job if you call knocking off a fester a repair job. The wall in 47 is still ahead. There's a car with a hood up. Let's see, I think it's Jimmy Thompson at number seven. Yes, it is. Here comes Thompson around the south turn. How can he see? Thompson's back in the pits. Time for another repair job. And this is the way it's done. <laughs> Who needs a hood anyway? So Jimmy Thompson's footless now, but he's back in the race. Well, who's ahead now? Jack Smith is trying to pass the wall and take the lead. He's driving like mad, but 47 is still ahead. Look out there. Just a little crack up. Takes more than that to worry these boys, though. Jack Smith's gaining a lap on the stragglers now, and still out after the wallet. Roy Hall at 2-2-2 is still third behind Smith. Woody Coleman's in trouble, and it has to happen to somebody out of 97 starters. This is a rugged race, and believe me, those turns are murder on the cars. Ask this driver, it's nerve-wracking waiting on mechanics no matter how fast they work. Here comes 92 into the pits. It's Herb Thomas who won the 500 miler at Darlington, South Carolina. Apparently not too hopeful today. Jack Smith's plenty hopeful though. He's right on the Wallen's tail. The battle for the lead goes on down the road and into the south turn. The Wallen at 47 has gained a little over Jack Smith. Crowd into the south turn. Uh oh, boy, how can they take it? Hoodless number seven speeds right along, but he's not in the battle between Smith and the Wallet. The Wallet's still ahead on the north turn, but not much. Smith passes the Wallet. After a 15-mile battle, Jack Smith, number two, is now in the lead. The wall in 47 is second on the fifth lap. Oh, look out there! Watch out, end over end! Look at that car, end over end, ladies and gentlemen. How can a driver take that? Is he okay? We can't see yet. There he is, there he is in the shadows. He's coming out, I think he's all right. Yes, he's okay. Don Rudolph stayed with it and came out okay. Wow. Boy, I'm telling you, thrills galore. I don't think he can stand up, though. He's kind of shaky. What's next? Oh, that's next. Another hood flies up. It's Charles Dixon from North Carolina. And that battle for the lead isn't over yet. The Walton 47 is out after Jack Smith now. This beach is a great place for passing, smooth and hard as it is. But those turns, oh, there's something else again. Treacherous, the loose sand and ruts there. Just the same drivers use the turns for passing, even though the straightaways are sometimes easiest for that. See how they crowd into the perilous south turn. No wonder they go over. And look out there. There goes one, over the side and over and over again. Oh, if he comes out of that one, I don't know. We have it, there he is, coming out okay. That's Art Finkley. Yes, Art Finkley of New Albany, Indiana. He's, man, they got me so excited, I can't even talk. He's okay, though. Coming out of the turn into the beach is tough going, believe me. Look at Jack Smith sail through the air. B2 is passed, but, uh, well, he's no rocket. Another car stalls in the turn. It's the north turn. It's a hazardous spot. 
The hazard is quickly removed. NASCAR claims a fine safety record. Not a single fatality in 190,000 racing miles, but believe me, plenty of crack-ups. Look out there. Look out now. Oh, we just about had it. Nearly had another crack-up. Boy, I'd say number 668 couldn't avoid that wreck on the hump. He gets away again. Hardly in a manner calculated to win a race. Jack Smith in 2B is still ahead of the field. It's Bill Chevalier, the flying Frenchman from New Jersey. He's his own pit crew. Has two nice kids too, incidentally. He doesn't tarry long either. In through the window. Well, that's one way of doing it. He's back in the race already. Well, there are 60 or 70 cars in the race. Some of these cars are as much as 15 years old, or at least the engine models are. You know, it's hard to tell the age or make of a body because it probably has no relationship to the motor at all. The older models are the sportsman's class. The rules allow the drivers to modify the motors, and of course, the boys are always trying to get another ounce of power out of them. The late model motors, you can't tell them from the outside appearance, are in the modified division. These are the souped-up cars. The rules allow special additions to make for greater speed. And this is where they take their greatest punishment. These boys are racing for a total purse of $3,500. The winner gets $750, and it's $500 for second, and $50 for seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. And $25 each for the 11th and 35th, through 35th, rather. Almost everybody gets a little money out of it. Here's a new one in the running, Curtis Turner in 16A. He's come up to fourth place. There's 88 with Frankie Schneider, who befriended the Irish girl we interviewed. Joe Weatherly in 34, who started first, and good old number seven without a hood. Jack Smith in 2B is still ahead. Another car is stalled going into the north turn, but, well, that's old stuff by now. The battle for the lead has to let up. It's just different people chasing Jack Smith in 2B. There goes another one right into the ditch. Look out there. This time it's, let me see, Dick Linder from Pittsburgh. Boy, he didn't have room to turn around, did he? Where is he? Oh, there he is. There he is. He's okay. He doesn't hurt. Curtis Turner's really pouring the coke to it now. Hardly lets up on the turn. Wally Campbell at number one passes one in the loose sand. And Jack Smith, like old man River, just keeps rolling along. Oh, another one upside down there, this time on the north turn. Preston Niblett of Frankfurt, Delaware, has provided the north turn crowd with its biggest thrill, it seems. She's back on her feet again, though, and safely out of the way. And it's a good thing, the way drivers are gunning their mounts to get a little bigger bite of that prize pie. Passes another one on the road. Even though he's still ahead, Smith has a dangerously narrow lead. Joe Weatherly in number 34 is after Smith now. He's in the slower sports division too. Not much slower though, I'd say. These rough turns are making it tough for today's fastest drivers to match the race record of 93 miles an hour. Weatherly's pulling ahead of Jack Smith now. It's a real battle for the lead on the turn. There's the 
There they go. But on the beach, Smith pulls up on Weatherly in 34 and takes the lead once more. It's the 16th lap, two-thirds of the way, and it's still anybody's race. But Smith is still ahead. Smith's greater speed gives him the advantage on the straightaway. But his brakes are gone, and he's having trouble with his gears. He may have to stop for gas soon, too. Weatherly at 34 can't keep up the pace with Smith. On his 20th lap, Smith has to stop for gasoline. Every precious second counts now. And in a matter of seconds, Smith pulls back into the race, still in time to hold the lead. There goes Weatherly in 34. Smith got away just in time. They're all driving hard and fast now with all the daring and skill they have. The race is almost over. There's Smith. Look out there. Careful, man, or you won't win this race. But Smith's not taking it easy. Not easy at all. Smith's going faster than ever now, if that's possible. This is the next to last lap, and look at them go. These are the daredevils of the racing sport. The white flag is out. That means one lap to go. Smith's still ahead in 2B. Well, that flag is almost as welcome as the checkered flag. Curtis Turner in 16A is second now. Wally Campbell in nine. He's unhappy though. Whoops! He almost lost out entirely. I wonder if Wally Campbell, the number one, thinks he can still do better. Jack Smith pilots his 2B around the last turn. Only two miles to go. Turner in 16A and Weatherly in 34 are still running second and third. And Wally Campbell still trying, maybe too hard. There they go, toward the finish line. Smith still ahead. He gets the checkered flag and he wins. What a battle. He has averaged 87 and a half miles an hour. Turner in 16A is second. Joe Weatherly in 34 is third. Hey, doesn't the excitement ever end? The race is over, mister. And the crowd runs to see the damage that has been wrought. Seven crack-ups in the south turn, and most of them still lying helpless in the sand. The salvage crew is out already. Most, if not all, of these cars will be patched up and back at racing soon. Maybe even this one. After all, it's the motor that counts. Anybody will do. Fortunately, no one has been more than bruised. It's been a great day for race fans and drivers alike. Plenty of thrills and little damage. And here's the victor of the 100-mile NASCAR race at Daytona Beach, Florida. He's Jack Smith, a 28-year-old daredevil from Atlanta, Georgia, happy to get his wife's victory kit.